Hey everyone, this is Sohil with The Social Panda and today we are looking at the Moto G from Motorola, their latest entry into the low-priced smartphone market. Now, I'm going to have a look at the box first because uh, I found something interesting. Inside the box, they only provide you the cable, the USB cable and the phone itself. There isn't a USB plug within the box. This is a bit strange as they're trying to market this phone to the millions of people in developing countries and some of them may be first time buyers. So it's a strange decision that Motorola have made here. Moving on to the phone itself, it comes with a beautiful 4.5 inch 720p display. Now it comes in at 329 pixels per inches. It isn't as high as some of the other flagship phones such as the HTC One or the Samsung Galaxy S4, but it really does do the trick. Unless you have the 1080p display right next to this phone, you will not be noticing any difference in screen quality. It comes with a 5 megapixel rear camera and a 1.3 megapixel front camera. The design is quite sleek, it fits in your hand quite comfortably. It's copied over from the Moto X literally, so it does feel quite comfortable to hold in your hands. Uh, there is a little bump at the back, there's a headphone jack at the top and the USB charging plug at the bottom. Turning the phone on, the first thing you'll notice is the beautiful, clean and crisp 720p screen. I really can't recommend this screen enough. It really is good for the price. I mean, some of the devices that cost maybe $100 more can't match this phone's LCD screen. It really is that good. The touch response times are great, and I think that's uh, another plus for this phone. The phone comes with 5.52 GB of storage with the 8 gigabyte model and roughly 12 GB for the 16 GB model. The battery is a 2070 milliamp battery, which isn't one of the biggest ones we've seen, but Motorola have done a really good job at making this device really power efficient, and I get one day's worth of battery life out of this phone easily, and I guarantee that you will as well, no matter how much you use the phone, how many movies you watch, how many text messages you send, you're bound to be getting one day's worth of battery out of this device, and that I think is amazing. The phone is running Android 4.3. It's pretty much stock apart from a couple of apps that Motorola have bundled in with the phone. Uh, the good thing about this phone is that it's going to be guaranteed the 4.4 KitKat update very soon. So this phone will not be missing out on any of the treats from Google from the upcoming 4.4 software, which is again a plus on the phone. Gaming on this phone is good as you'd expect it to be. Most Android phones now come with the Snapdragon chips inside them and they do more than a sufficient job on playing games. Uh, especially as you can see Angry Birds is one of the very less power hungry games. Uh, it doesn't require as much processing power as some of the other games would and it's playing it quite beautifully I think. The other game I'm going to show you is called Ridiculous Fishing. This has just been released recently and it was part of the Humble Bundle and if you haven't got it I'd recommend you get it because this game is really amazing. All you have to do is go down as deep as you can and find some fish as you would when you go fishing but the ridiculous thing about this is that you would be shooting the fish as soon as it comes out. Try and beat your high scores etc etc and I think this game is really really addictive. We'll move on to the Google Drive app. This is an interesting move from Google as they're providing 50 GB of free storage for two years on this phone. So that's another plus and it does for that short storage that you'd be getting if you buy the 8 GB model because you can access 50 GB on Google Drive, which is great, I think. YouTube, again, uh, it's great quality with 720p. As you can see, I'm watching an old England versus Australia match in cricket and uh, uh, that time England did win. Unfortunately, we're not having such luck this time around in Australia so that's that. Play Store again same as you'd find on all phones nothing new to see here uh, you can download all the apps that you normally would be able to on any other Android phone. Chrome surprisingly I get told by a lot of people that Chrome on Android isn't as responsive as browsing on iOS generally but I haven't found that to be the issue not just on this phone on any phone actually. Uh, scrolling is quite okay. Maybe sometimes it takes a bit of time to load, but that's because the page is quite big in itself. 
Gmail again is great as you'd find on an Android device anyway and apps generally do work quite well, quite responsive, quite quick in terms of opening and closing. Uh, Motorola have provided an assist app here which is pretty much like do not disturb on your iOS devices. All it does is sets your phone on silent on certain times depending on your meetings or depending on your sleeping patterns. The camera is one of the biggest disappointments on this phone but I think that was expected coming in at such a price. A 5 megapixel camera doesn't do a good job. This phone comes with Motorola's own photo app which has uh, slow motion video and HDR everything bundled in with it um, which is great but uh, I don't think the camera results are going to be great. They'd be okay for Instagramming or Facebooking but apart from that as you can see even in good light conditions the images are quite bland and there is surprisingly a lot of noise in uh, good light conditions. The last image here shows you how bad the noise level is. The poor bloke's face has completely just been muddled up. That's how bad the camera is in good light conditions. So if you would like your phone to be your main camera, then I would really avoid this phone. So what do I make of this phone? I think for the price, $200, £130, I think it really does do a good job for the price it's coming in at. It's got a great screen, a good processor, and most of all, it's going to be getting the latest Android software in the future. And that's all I'd expect from a phone, that it keeps on getting the latest software and the goodies from the developers. And so for that reason, I really recommend this phone to everyone, even if it's a secondary device. I really would like everyone to buy this phone. Thank you for watching. This is Sohil with The Social Panda. See you later.